You keep seeing people on Instagram eating nothing but steak, butter, and eggs. No salad, no bread, not even a single vegetable, and somehow claiming they feel incredible. Ever wonder what happens inside your body when you remove literally every plant and live entirely on meat? Today, I'll explain the carnivore diet like you're five years old. By the end, you'll understand exactly what shifts happen in your body when you eat only animal products, why some people swear by it, and who might actually benefit from trying it. Most people think the carnivore diet is just another low-carb trend, like keto, but more extreme. But it's not about counting macros or tracking ratios. It's about total elimination. You eat meat, fish, eggs, and sometimes dairy. That's it. No fruits, no vegetables, no grains, no beans, no fiber, nothing that grew from the ground. And when you do this, your entire metabolism reorganizes itself because you've cut off its usual fuel supply. Here's what happens first. Your glucose intake drops to almost nothing. Plants give you carbs. Carbs break down into glucose. When you remove all plants, that fuel source vanishes. So your body shifts. Within a few days, your liver starts making ketones from the fat you're eating. Ketones are alternative fuel molecules that your brain and muscles can burn instead of sugar. Your cells learn to burn fat instead of glucose. This is similar to keto, but carnivore takes it further because there's zero carbs sneaking in from vegetables or nuts. Your insulin levels flatten out. No blood sugar spikes, no crashes, just steady, stable energy from fat and protein. This is why people report feeling less hungry and ditching their constant snack cravings. Your body isn't riding a glucose roller coaster anymore. That's the metabolic shift happening inside you. Now let's talk about digestion, because this is where things get weird. You're eating almost no fiber. Most nutrition advice tells you fiber is essential for gut health, but carnivore flips that script entirely. Animal products are low-residue foods. They break down almost completely in your small intestine. Very little reaches your colon, so your bowel movements change dramatically. Some people get constipated at first. Others find their digestion becomes incredibly simple. No bloating, no gas, no urgent bathroom trips. This happens because you've removed fermentable plant fibers that feed gut bacteria. Less fermentation means less gas production. For people with IBS or SIBO, this can feel like a miracle. For others, it feels uncomfortable and unnatural. Your gut is adjusting to processing only animal proteins and fats. This adaptation period usually takes one to three weeks. Some people never feel right without fiber. Others report the best digestion of their lives. Here's where it gets interesting. Your appetite changes in ways you don't expect. Protein is the most satiating macronutrient by far. When you're eating mostly protein and fat, your hunger hormones get suppressed. Ghrelin, the hormone that makes you feel hungry, drops significantly. Leptin, which signals fullness, becomes more effective. You might naturally start eating less without trying. Some people on carnivore end up eating one or two meals a day simply because they're not hungry. This isn't willpower. It's hormones doing their job properly. Your body is getting dense nutrition from animal foods and signaling that it's satisfied. A single ribeye steak contains protein, fat, iron, zinc, B vitamins, and many other nutrients in highly absorbable forms. Your body recognizes this nutritional density. This is why people lose weight quickly on carnivore, even without counting calories. They're just eating less because they don't want more. But here's what you need to understand. The carnivore diet isn't popular because meat is magical. It's popular because elimination is powerful. When you remove every single plant food, you remove every possible plant-based trigger. Lectins, oxalates, phytates, histamines, salicylates, FODMAPs, all gone. Gluten, dairy alternatives, seed oils, added sugars, gone too. If you've been struggling with mystery symptoms for years and suddenly they vanish on carnivore, it's not because plants are poison. It's because you accidentally removed whatever your body couldn't handle. This is why carnivore works as a diagnostic tool. People use it short-term, feel better, then slowly reintroduce foods one by one to find their personal triggers. It's like clearing a cluttered room completely so you can see what actually matters when you put things back. Now check this out. There's a specific group of people who tend to benefit most from carnivore. People with severe autoimmune conditions like rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, or Crohn's disease. People with chronic gut issues that haven't responded to other diets. People with multiple food sensitivities who don't know what's safe to eat anymore. People with severe mental health struggles who've tried everything else. These aren't your average dieters. These are people at the end of their rope, willing to try something extreme because nothing else worked. 
and for a portion of them, carnivore provides real relief. Inflammation markers like C-reactive protein often drop significantly within weeks. Pain decreases, energy returns, skin clears, brain fog lifts. This doesn't mean carnivore is the only answer, but it does mean the simplicity and elimination power can be genuinely helpful for certain people. But the diet also feels terrible for others. Some people try carnivore and feel sluggish, constipated, and miserable. Their cholesterol skyrockets beyond comfortable ranges. Their energy tanks instead of improving. They miss the freshness of fruit and the crunch of vegetables. They can't imagine a life without variety. And that's completely valid. Carnivore is extreme. It's restrictive. It's socially awkward. It eliminates entire food groups that billions of people thrive on. Just because it helps some people doesn't mean it's right for everyone. Your coworker who lost 40 pounds on carnivore isn't you. Their gut, their genetics, their health history, all different. Here's what most carnivore advocates won't tell you. Long-term data doesn't exist yet. Most studies on all-meat diets involve small groups or short time frames. We don't know what happens after 10 or 20 years of zero plants. We do know that populations who eat mostly animal products can survive and thrive. Certain Arctic communities like the Inuit traditionally ate almost entirely animal foods. But they also eat the whole animal. Organs, bone marrow, cartilage, even stomach contents. Not just muscle meat from the grocery store. And their genetics adapted over thousands of years to this diet. You might not have that same adaptation. Your gut microbiome evolved eating diverse foods. Removing all fiber changes your microbiome composition dramatically. Some beneficial bacteria that feed on plant fibers may disappear. Whether that's good or bad depends entirely on your starting point. If those bacteria were fermenting foods you're sensitive to, their absence might help you. If they were keeping your gut lining healthy, their loss might hurt you long term. Now here's the part that affects your decisions. If you're healthy and thriving on a balanced diet with plants, carnivore probably offers you nothing. But if you're dealing with chronic inflammation, mysterious gut pain, or autoimmune flares that doctors can't solve, carnivore might be worth exploring short term under medical supervision. Not as a permanent lifestyle not as a religion, but as a reset tool to identify what's been hurting you. Think of it like hitting a circuit breaker. You turn everything off, then flip switches back on one at a time to find the problem. Most functional medicine doctors recommend carnivore for 30 to 90 days maximum as an elimination pro Then you systematically reintroduce foods while tracking symptoms. The carnivore diet also raises bigger questions about nutrition advice. We've been told for decades that plants are essential. Fiber is non-negotiable. Fruits and vegetables prevent disease. And for most people, that's probably true. But the existence of people thriving on carnivore challenges the idea that one diet works for everyone. Maybe nutrition is more individual than we thought. Maybe some bodies handle plant compounds better than others. Maybe the carnivore diet's success isn't about meat being superior. It's about simplicity revealing problems that complexity was hiding. When you eat 50 different foods per week, identifying the problem becomes impossible. When you eat five foods, problems become obvious. So to recap, the carnivore diet means eating only animal products and removing all plants. Your body shifts to burning fat for fuel instead of glucose. Insulin stabilizes, and appetite often drops naturally through hormonal changes. Digestion simplifies because you're eating low-residue foods with no fiber. Some people with autoimmune issues, severe gut problems, or multiple food sensitivities find relief by eliminating all plant-based triggers. But it's extreme, restrictive, and lacks long-term safety data. It works as a short-term diagnostic tool for some and feels terrible for others. So here's the real question. If someone you know claims carnivore cured their decade-long health problem, are they experiencing a genuine biological response to elimination? Or are they just caught up in another diet trend that'll look foolish in five years?